YouTube, Autumn Beckman here. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. My channel is all about luxury on a budget, so if that is your thing, please like, subscribe, and click the bell notification icon to be notified when I post a new video. Today's video is a tag. It's called the Jewelry Style Tag, and it's by Jill Maurer. She started it, and she tagged me. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started with this. We have 13 questions to get through. Question number one, what was your first piece of jewelry and do you still have it? I have no idea. <laughs> I've always had jewelry. There wasn't a first piece that was particularly special that I recall. I've just kind of always had jewelry in my life. Um, one thing I can remember from childhood is that one Christmas, my grandmother, I have a cousin who's my age, and my grandmother would get us the same things, and she got us these little diamond studs. But they were, when I say little, they were like the tiniest studs you could think of. They were so small that one of them actually slipped through my cousin's ear and fell out, and she lost them. I do not have mine anymore. I don't know what happened to them. I remember it being a bit of a running joke in the family for a while, which is kind of rude because it was really nice of my grandmother to get those for us and nobody in my family has money so she couldn't afford to get, you know, something bigger, bigger stones, more expensive stones. So I thought it was a really sweet gift no matter how small they were, but that's the first fine jewelry piece that I recall having. Question two, do you prefer gold or silver? It, that's changed over time. When I was growing up, I always preferred silver, but at some point it changed and I prefer gold now, despite what I'm wearing, which is set in silver. I like that gold pops more. I think it looks a little more rich. You know, part of what it might've been is my ex-boyfriend one Christmas gave me a Movado watch and it was black. And, and silver and he said something about, and I preferred silver at that time, but he said something about he wished that he had gotten the black and gold and he said that he thought that looked more elegant and that's probably part of what triggered my switch to gold, but I don't know for sure. And I was thinking about this question, I think I only have one piece that is actually gold and not just gold toned. I'll show those to you here. They're earrings that I got at a place called Civita in Italy. And I'll show you a picture of Civita here too. This is a photograph that I took of it. And you actually have to walk um, down a hill and then up that bridge there that you see in order to get there. And uh, it's a really beautiful, incredible place. If you ever have the chance to go, it's worth it. Question three, is your jewelry style big and bold or small and dainty? Well, this looks pretty small and dainty, don't you think? It used to be more small and dainty, but it's gotten kind of big and bold. I like to wear statement pieces, statement necklaces or statement earrings. I have quite a few of both. If I'm wearing a necklace, I'll pair that usually with small earrings. These are simple little half hoops. And if I'm wearing statement necklaces, I might pair it with a small necklace, I might pair it with a big necklace, or I might wear no necklace at all. Question four, do you wear all fine jewelry, all costume jewelry, or a mix of both? I definitely have a mix of both. I would guess that most of my pieces are costume, but I have some nicer pieces too, most of which are turquoise, set in sterling silver. Like I said, I don't think I have any pieces in gold or gold plated besides those earrings. And I'm not 100% sure that those are gold plated, but I remember about what I paid for them and maybe they are based on that. I haven't thought too much about getting fine jewelry because I like to switch my jewelry up a lot, which we'll talk about in another question. I like having a big variety of jewelry to choose from. I have an abundance of it. I'm also pretty good about when I do like a spring clean, which I do several times a year, and I get rid of things and donate to Goodwill. I'm, I'm really good about being able to get rid of things that I'm not wearing. This piece, in case you're wondering, I got at, I was at an art teacher's conference in Galveston a couple years ago, and there was a booth there where this woman had a lot of really beautiful pieces. I wish I'd bought more. You'll never guess what I paid for this. It looks like a pretty expensive piece. I don't know what all the stones are. I know these two are turquoise. This one I don't know. These white ones kind of look like opals. They have a little bit of a bluish glow in them, but I'm not, I don't think they are opals, um, but I really don't know. Maybe Jill Maurer can tell me. And then I don't know what these other green stones are. These look like mother of pearl. They're kind of rough and chunky, but I'm no expert on stones. But it was only $40. What? 
And I asked her because the prices at her booth seemed just too good to be true. So I asked her why everything was priced so low and it's set in sterling silver. I mean, even that alone should be more than $40. She said that she gets them, I forget what country it was now, India maybe, that she gets them from over there and that they're made by artisans who are learning how to make jewelry. They're learning how to make fine jewelry and these are like practice pieces, which I thought was crazy. I've never heard of that before. So I definitely took advantage and bought this necklace. I wish I'd bought more. I still have her information where I can get in touch with her again, but she had some pretty cool stuff and lots of nice statement pieces. I do not have much in the way of really high-end, expensive jewelry. It's just not something I've ever felt the need to to invest in, to spend that much money on. At one point I did want a pair of diamond studs and I found a pair that I liked. You know, you think, oh, I want one stone, but those are insanely expensive. So I found these that are made up of several smaller stones and when it's polished, which it's not right now, it looks like one stone. You can't tell from a distance that it's several smaller ones. And when I saw these, I thought they were so beautiful. I started saving up to get them and I had quite a bit of the money saved up. And then the boyfriend and I started dating and I was telling him about these earrings that I was saving up for them and was planning to get them that year. And the next time I saw him, he presented them to me, which I was not expecting at all. That was not why I told him about the earrings. I was shocked. So now they have some sentimental value. Question five, do you wear the same pieces of jewelry every day or do you mix it up? Mostly I mix it up with my earrings and necklaces. I mix that up with the bracelets. That's where I wear some of the same things every day. I wear the bat bracelet, which I'll talk about later every day. And I wear the silver coiled bracelet that's from James Avery. And both of those have some sentimental meaning, which is why I wear them every day. Question six, are your ears pierced? And if so, how many piercings? They are, I got my ears pierced in second grade and I just have the one piercing. And one of the things that I'm kind of careful about kind of, with my big statement earrings, is that I don't get any that are too heavy because I don't want my lobes to be, or the holes in my lobes to be stretched out. I do have one pair that's really heavy. It's these here, and these are costume jewelry. I love them. They are so fun to wear. They move around a lot, but they are very heavy. So I don't wear them very often for that reason. And I've never been interested in getting other holes in my ears or wearing cuffs. The one hole for me is just fine. I'm, you know, despite liking statement jewelry so much, I'm pretty conservative, I think, with jewelry, at least in that sense. Question seven, anything else pierced, if you care to share? No, um, not that I don't care to share, but nothing else is pierced. Again, I'm kind of conservative that way. Not that I think there's anything wrong with it. I just, for me, it would not be the right choice. But I think it's awesome that other people have more holes or their nose or whatever else pierced. I am, after all, an artist. I've spent a lot of time around pierced people. I also do not have tattoos. Again, not against them. I think people who are covered in tattoos, I think that's awesome. I think it's beautiful. I don't want to go through the pain, but more than that, I don't want to commit to something like that. And then I would worry that especially getting them at a younger age, your body and your skin changes. And I would be a little concerned about how they would look when I was an old lady. Question eight, if you have or had a wedding or engagement ring, did you help select it or was it a total surprise? Well, I have never wanted to be married, so I have not had one of those rings. So. I'm going to take the liberty of inserting a different question, a question of my own here. And that is, do you have a favorite stone? And if so, what is it and why? And I do, and it is turquoise. Like I said, there's some turquoise in this necklace. Why is it my favorite? I think partly because I'm in the South and there's a lot of turquoise here. When you go to our rodeo, you'll see lots of jewelry sellers with turquoise and other stones too. And then when we've gone to New Mexico, I come across a lot of turquoise, of course. So it's a big thing here, turquoise. And it's in the colors that I love, greens and blues. And there are so many different kinds of turquoise and every stone is different with all the veining and everything. I just think it's really beautiful and it's not crazy expensive. Some of it can be, and most of that has to do from from what I understand with the silver setting. Question nine, do you wear rings on other fingers or just stick with your ring finger? I generally don't wear rings. I do have some rings and I have some rings that I really love and I have worn rings before. I just 
stopped wearing them because I use my hands a lot for typing, for writing, for drawing, for photography, for whatever else, and they get in my way. I just get annoyed by them. I don't like having any kind of constraints on my finger. It just, I knew if I got them, because I have worn them before, if I knew if I wore a ring it just takes some time to get used to it. But I prefer my fingers to be free. Question 10, what is your birthstone? I had no idea until Jill asked this question. So I went to the internet and I found out. Then I went to Jill's channel. She does a birthstone video each month and I looked at her October video and learned about my birthstones, which are opal and tourmaline. Opal I did kind of know about because my mom had opal growing up and she's the same month that I am. But it seems like every time I see some kind of birthstone display somewhere. The October stone changes a lot. Like one person will say it's this and somebody else says it's this or that. I had never heard of tourmaline, for example. Never ever heard of it. Opal I knew about. My mom had several opal pieces when I was growing up. And tourmaline, Jill's video was so helpful, thank you Jill, because I learned a lot about opals and I learned all kinds of things about tourmaline and it's a pretty fascinating stone. So if you don't know about it, go check out that video. I'll link it below. I'll also link her tag video below, of course. Question 11, do you own any jewelry with your birthstone in it? I do have one pair of tiny opal earrings, some little studs. I don't know if I've ever even worn them, maybe once, but I find that I don't wear tiny studs. I have a few of them and they just sit there. But I do think opals are gorgeous, so maybe I should look into getting some in some kind of statement piece. No idea how much that would cost. Need to look at it. I've been looking at jewelry lately on Etsy, and it's interesting. You can look for certain stones and there's such a wide variety of prices and some of them look like similar cuts and sizes of stone and similar settings and materials but the prices will be you know one's thirty dollars and one's seven hundred i have no idea i don't know enough about jewelry so i have no idea what the reasons for those price differences would be i've also seen a lot of raw stones like i was looking for some emerald i wanted to get some more green jewelry and i saw some raw emerald pieces that were very interesting seems like that's kind of a trend now raw stones rather than them being cut also when we were in venice i saw this necklace in a shop window it's all opal beads and i thought it was just incredible so i wanted to share that with you question 12 what is your most sentimental piece of jewelry. I had to think long and hard about this because I have quite a few pieces that have sentimental value. And right now it would be this bracelet. I don't know if you can see it very well, but it's a little bat, like a Batman symbol. I got that after Sebastian died because I called him Bat. So that's my little reminder of Sebastian, one of many reminders of him. Question 13, is there a piece of jewelry on your wish list? Not really. I could think of two things that I'd like to get, but they're not things that I'm like, I have to have it. One is a pearl necklace. I have some nice pearl studs that I do wear often, and I have a pearl necklace, but it broke at one point, the string broke. So I can get that restrung, or I could replace it with a nicer pearl necklace, because the one that I have, the pearls aren't that iridescent and lovely. I'd like to get a, a nicer one, which means spending more money. Another piece of jewelry on my wish list that I have mentioned in videos before is the Louis Vuitton Essential V earrings, the V hoop earrings. I really like these. Haven't been able to get them out of my mind for a long time. Maybe I'll get them sometime this year with my 40th birthday coming up, but I just don't think they're worth the money. They're 400 something dollars and that's just too much for what they are, really. I know I would wear them, they'd get a lot of use, but with all the quality issues with Vuitton, I worry about the gold plating or whatever it is, it's probably not even gold plating, rubbing off and seeing silver underneath and and for that price, it's just pretty hard to swallow. But I do really like them. Otherwise, I don't really have jewelry wish lists. When I buy jewelry, I usually just browse and buy what I like. I don't usually go shopping with something particular in mind. And that's the jewelry style tag. Thanks so much to Jill for doing this tag. I really enjoyed it. I tagged KW Shops, Leo Lion LV, Lux Purse Love, Louis Vuitton Coffee Lover, Carol Summer, and Will McKayson. We need a guy's perspective too in here.